on Dead Dodge Garage, I am not smart. Bodywork. Today on Dead Dodge Garage, it's a crime of opportunity. Boop. This seems fine. <laughs> Time to play Power Wash Simulator again. Photo finish. Run the pressure washer out of gas. Nailed it. Today on Dead Dodge Garage, we part out all the Tom stuff. Well, I thought we had a drive shaft, but well, that's a no. on that later. The last thing in the universe I need is another project car. So anyway, I bought this 67 Fastback Barracuda. Longtime viewers may recall that something I like to look for in cars like this, redeeming qualities. Well, there's one over there. Huh, these are usually cracked. That's weird. Would you believe me if I told you this car has a title? It has a trunk lid and taillights that I allegedly borrowed off of Tom's cars. Other than the humongous hole somebody hacked in here with tin snips trying to convert this to a four on the floor, as opposed to the original three on the tree, the floors are perfect. Perfect! The trunk, also perfect. Figure that one out. You know, I mean, there's some stuff here, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. eh. Let's just hang out over here on the good side while I tell you my plans. Slant six, four speed, eight and three quarter, Slot mags, and, um, room. Kind of missing some stuff here, but we're not going to worry about that for now. I have a goal. My goal is drive this car four days from now. Place your bets now. Might need to do something with this. Really, you know, I just needed to borrow the trailer. <sighs> oh, well. The rest of my natural born life looks like this. Digging around for slant six mounts. But I found one. Well, not only did I not work on the car today, I didn't even look at it, so things are going great so far. Does it look better or worse in the sun? Uh, not totally sure, actually. Easy. Welding that together, but I only have one bike tree for my little bike tree powered cutter. Life's so hard. Oh look, priceless Barracuda parts. Today on Dead Dodge Garage, we're super bad at ordering stuff. Science! Why does this always take so dang long? Everything is coming up Millhouse. Here it is, one slant six, four speed, A body starter kit. Yes. Every time. Could not have planned that any better. Well. Okay, we get it. Let's talk about goals. If you don't have any, um, you're probably not gonna get anything done. I had a crazy goal to drive this thing by, well, yesterday, or maybe today at the latest, and that obviously didn't happen. But it's fine. It's mostly my fault. Kinda ordered the wrong clutch. It's here now, just a little late. That's okay. It's fine. I have a new goal. Put this in that car over there next weekend and drive it. That'll be cool. That might not happen either, but 
it's important to have goals. I don't know if this is the end of this video or the middle, but uh, one way or another, something's gonna happen. Oh look, priceless A-body parts. I have everything I need to put a Slant 6 in that Barracuda Fastback, except for this. That was almost too easy. There are all kinds of gems hiding in here. Don't tell anybody. This 70 Valiant at my favorite local junkyard has been the gift that keeps on giving for years. There are all kinds of things missing that found their way to uh, various projects of ours. Woo! Priceless Barracuda parts. Yep, I've been here a couple times. If I fit, I sit. Well, it's been a week. But I haven't actually touched it since day one, so... I think it still counts. As with all operations around here, there are about a thousand steps to do what I want to do. Step one is put that engine on this so I can get the picker out somehow through this crazy maze, unload the slant six from that truck, and then figure out how to get the Barracuda in here by myself. I'm sure that'll go great. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. I don't know if you've noticed, but Things have seriously gotten out of control here. Let's build a drivetrain in a truck bed. I thought I was installing an engine today. What I'm actually doing is wandering around looking for bolts. Yay! Oh, in case you were wondering, yes, I did use Loctite, and yes, I did torque them to spec. I'm confident that everything I need is somewhere in this mess. That's a start. Wow! Hey, fun random fact. That slant six to overdrive four speed bell housing came from fellow Mopar nut YouTuber, Dylan McCool. Figure that one out. Hey, what the heck? Decisions were made. Instead of using the heavy iron unit that sounds like a box of rocks, we we'll use this, the way too long e-body transmission out of the garbage can Cuda and hope everything works out. Nothing can go wrong here. Yay. And now for the fun part. Luckily, the sun kind of melted the ice and preheated it a little bit. That's what I see. I just spent way too much time turning the wrong mount into sort of the right mount. Not bad, not bad. Are you ready to party? I'm ready to party. That's good news. Let's put that in there. I know they're not my shoes. Oh, there's that shot, Ruins. Oh, I didn't know you were filming. <laughs> Everything's going terrific. 
that is in there. The mounts are kind of, eh. Might have to get a correct isolator for that side, but we're gonna let it ride for now. This is getting exciting. Why don't I just put it on the lift? Oh yeah. Do you guys know the concrete's cold today? <laughs> anyway, the transmission's mounted. I wouldn't worry about that little guy. You know what this whole operation's missing? Cute puppy dogs. Oh yeah. Good meathead. Okay, you go now. You know, sooner or later, brakes are gonna be a thing I need to have. But, uh, well, it's not gonna happen with this guy. Ugh. Random thrift store find to the rescue. Kind of bouncing around right now. Need to make a list and go buy stuff, but uh, throwing pieces from my stash at it. Alternator mount brackets. Nice. I have a wiper motor, but it's kind of the wrong one. Wiper arms and blades. Neat. Getting things figured out. This is a stick car, and all the clutch linkage was hanging in it. Unfortunately, the pivot on my bell housing is a little short. So, kind of going through what I have here, and I'm going to science something together. Before that, though, I reckon it's time for a sandwich. Mmm, lunch. Since I used the totally wrong, super long BE body transmission out of the garbage can, I was able to use the uh, super short driveline out of the garbage can. And it works perfectly. I even found some yoke hardware in the stash. This is why I hoard everything. Oh, what, that little guy? I wouldn't worry about. All right, you get it. Everything is going terrific. They're not tight. Oh, okay. I mean, they're not loose, but continued body work ah oh look at that getting kind of okay remember the other day when i was bragging about the door jams not being cracked that's fine and look at that it's got a seat of course it's kind of gross and it's been outside for ages and it's only held in with two nuts but still pretty good of course uh, i could have finished cutting the floor out first Oh, well. Well, that might be a problem at some point, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. Oh, we're getting places, but slowly. Time for stew. I need to knock the giant den out of this door. That would be nice. I swear I had a radiator for this thing, but I guess I lost it in the divorce. Hey, a radiator appeared as if by magic. But I got to do more body work to make it fit. Which basically means... Smash it with the hammer! Oh, I need a heavier hammer. Nice! Now I'm in here, working on making the right-ish shifter work on the wrong transmission, and maybe somehow dodge this bench seat that's right in the way. My own problem. Kind of forgot that in the other car, the shifter sits all the way back between the seats. On an A-body transmission, the shifter should be, you know, right here. Unfortunately, because I have a bench seat, no amount of bending a shifter is going to fix that. So now I think I'm going to make a plate and put the shifter in the correct location. Conveniently, the demon is the gift that keeps on giving. And uh, I actually have a complete extra set of rods and levers, I think. Unfortunately, one of them's broken. And, well, this is turning into a mess. Wait a second. Somebody already made one for me. It was just mounted sideways and upside down. Have you ever noticed that you don't really see me do anything? Maybe I don't do anything. Look at this. Now, unfortunately, I do kind of still have to figure out some stuff. I think it's supposed to be higher and... Ah, whatever. Let's just appreciate it for what it is for now. Oh wait, it's a slant. It's gonna be more like. Man, the demon is truly the gift that keeps on giving. Speaking of which, it is super helpful to have a perfectly good four-speed car there to copy notes off of. I don't know about you, but I find this pretty exciting for one day of progress. It's uh. Still just a pile of parts, but it's getting closer to being a car. Maybe tomorrow we'll make tractor engine noises. 
but hell, maybe not. You know, I'd really like to be working on this thing now, but uh, unfortunately, mail trucks. Well, what is that in there? Ugh. Pay attention to that, that might be important. Oh, I guess uh, this was inhabited by some little tiny rats, which is impressive. But I guess I can forego plumbing the heater because that's not gonna work. Just take all my money then. Since I'm planning to drive this car, I decided a heater would be nice. So I, uh, well, I dragged out the rat turds and what could have been leak sealer, but I'm gonna pretend it wasn't, and uh, blew through the heater both ways. It was actually still full of antifreeze, so that's a good sign. Oh, that's not leak sealer, that's dead bees. I was really hoping there was a Slant 6 points distributor in here, but no. This whole time I was thinking I had an A-body battery tray from the Scamp parts car. Then I remembered that on the drive home, the battery in that scamp fell through the battery tray, so I guess I don't. I do have this early B-Body one though. Maybe I can make that work. A commenter on my channel the other day said that I should slow down and actually show myself doing things. And if I did that, I would do better on subscribers and people would enjoy it. And he's absolutely right. Anyway, cooling system's done and it's got a belt now. Well, this is just upper-level stuff now. Well, you won't believe this, but... I have an engine that turns over. Uh, still needs oil. This is getting dangerously close, so it's time to take a break for a sandwich. And when I'm done with that, I suppose I need to get back to this whole shifter nightmare. Is anyone else bored of this thing not running yet? I am. Hey, used antifreeze is still antifreeze, guy. You know, one of the cool things about this project is stuff out all kinds of other vehicles from over the years going into it. I mean, spare four-speed parts from the Demon, front seat from that horrible rusty scamp, battery tray from my 66 Charger, this engine is from my friend Dan's pickup, the bell housing came from Dylan McCool, and the transmission came from some random guy. I was pretty excited for uh, this radiator that came out of the 73 Swinger I had for years that I kind of converted into a drag car. Unfortunately, it leaks. Oh, by the way, this battery negative cable's way too small. Anyway. Man, Slant 6s are just the best. A few years ago, a friend of mine made up some of these fancy HEI module mounting plates so you don't have to drill holes, just mount it on something. Unfortunately, this is my last one. Dang, I am good at everything. Well, I went ahead and started parting out that perfectly good brown van in the yard, and... Huh. Well, we're getting places anyway. What? Courtesy light. Wow. And look at this. The two bulbs that were dangling in the trunk, and I shoved back in these random lights, work. I don't believe it. Well, sometimes this works. Just not in this case. That's fine. I got greedy and tried to fix the dash lights and the courtesy light died. Huh. The other end of that hose started leaking. Maybe it's the clamp. Maybe it's the rubber. I don't know, but it sucks. The random old 5.8 hose I uh, grabbed from the box. No leaks there. I'm doing an HEI conversion here because it's already got an electronic distributor and it's just kind of the easiest and cheapest option. Be aware. The color coding on the two wires from the distributor pickup to the module does matter. But every time I try to get it right the first time, it's wrong. So this time I decided to just shove the wires in there and we'll see what happens. Fire? Aww. Hmm. Contact? Ah, uh, that's fine. So it turns out this electronic distributor that's been sitting in this engine for a year since it ran in the truck, perfectly fine, uh, was bad. So I had to grab one from my stash over there, jam that in here. Although the mechanical pump is fine, the tank is, well, not fine. So I took the liberty of installing a temporary fuel system.
have a running 67 Barracuda Fastback. Amazing! Ah, what's a little burning stuff among friends? Still need to figure out shifter and clutch linkage stuff, but uh, brakes would be nice. Please come loose. Please? Come on, come loose. Come on, guy, I said please. Oh, I guess that's why we say please. Waiting for someone to tell me I should have just, you know, used this one. You know, usually I'm pretty good at getting those old uh, push rods out of these things, but, well, not in this case. I don't even know how I did that. Oh, I made the extremely poor decision of smelling under the gas cap. <sighs> All right, time to walk away from this for a minute. The mess in here is atrocious. But at least I have cider. Hey, uh, headlights. Yeah, they're the crappy ones from the scamp, but good enough for now. Well, the sun sets on another day. I modified this uh, shifter mounting plate some more. I made up some tube spacers here that are gonna kick it out and the shifter will end up roughly in the A-body location. I'm gonna weld little gussets onto those tubes so it's strongish and then uh, set up rods. But that's a future Jamie problem, and unfortunately, I probably won't get to touch this for a few days. Has it been two days yet? Yeah, I think it has. A man can dream, though. A man can dream. Boat's just having a little wee. It smells like breakfast out here. It's delicious. Well, it's a shifter, and it's mounted. But uh, definitely need to brace that all up before I start banging gears here. Now we're getting places. One, two pretty much works, although I have to do a little extra cross member clearancing there. Three, four, I'm gonna have to put a bend right in the middle and then weld a bolt on the end because this is a broken spare from the demon. Reverse, well, I think it'll work just fine, but it goes underneath the car, so we'll deal with that later. Radiator's even worse than I thought. Ugh. Okay, it's been a week and a day since I brought this thing home. I've spent something like I don't know, two and a half actual days on it, I guess. And it's time to get this thing driving today. If for no other reason than to save the shop floor from further ruin. Of course, the first step to any job out here this time of year is uh, make it be less cold. Well, that's funny. I didn't unbolt that. Now, these rods are out of a non-overdrive car, like a demon. And uh, this rod wouldn't have been right to begin with for this overdrive transmission, but also my shifter's in the wrong spot. So, put a bend in it here, grind off the debris here from it being broken once, cut off this bolt, and voila! A new 3-4 shift rod made with a bench vise, a torch, a welder, and a hammer. Nice. Today I learned if you stack this thing to the roof in there, it actually does something. Gonna need more firewood. I've only just noticed this, but uh, I plan to enjoy that for years to come. And there we go, three, four, nice. Need some clips. Now, those welds aren't gonna do dick all without some gussets on there, and I'm gonna have to be very careful and make sure things don't move so my bolts still line up. And with that out of the way, more hackery. Yeah, that might be sufficient. Yeah, good thing it doesn't have to be pretty to work, you know what I mean? Really did firm it up though, so I think that's gonna work really well. Don't follow me for more fabrication tips, but do sit back and admire that, oops, well, need some clips, but anyway, it works. Hey, I got the linkage all set up and it's mint and can't get reversed for some reason, and I just figured out why. That pin is supposed to come through this hole, and uh, well, it's not aligned right. But 
that's fine. I have the shifter adapter plate thing fixer right here. You know, something tells me you're not really gonna get a sense from the video of how much time I have into making the wrong transmission be the right-ish transmission. Ah, uh, the good news is, It does work, usually. Now I've just got to make up a clutch pivot spacer because for some reason, even though this is the right pivot, it's in the wrong place. And then I need to bench bleed this guy. And then drive time? Ah, can't forget transmission fluid. And then cleaning this horrible, horrible, god awful mess. Look at the brilliant engineering there. Well, it's not fantastic, but it does clutchy stuff. Well, this end of this operation is looking pretty nice. But, you know, shockingly, the rear right wheel cylinder did that immediately. So, three out of four ain't bad, right? Oh, I found a random choke stove that sort of fit in there. So, now we have a choke. I do need to ground this second field terminal so we'll have charging. Getting dangerously close to test driving this thing, but I decided to fix the whole stack of washers spindle nut thing. It's, uh, it's pretty good now. All right. Randomly remembered all the steering linkage was loose, and well, I got most of it tight, except for the idler arm. Everything's all rusty and horrible. And while I was doing that, I learned that the oil pan's sitting on the steering. It's fine. Let's drive this thing. <laughs> Just doing necessary maintenance to make the car move again. Well, how about that? I don't know about you, but I am beside myself with excitement. I have a 67 Barracuda Fastback that runs and drives, kind of. Doesn't really stop, but you know, everything else works really well. That rusty voltage regulator still works and this thing charges. Now it was quite a thrash to get this done and uh, well, I cut more than a couple corners. So 
I got my work cut out for me making this a drivable car, but for now, I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy it. This thing was an abandoned parts car. The last registration, 1992. 30 years at least this thing's been off the road and in pieces. Now it's a working car. Now that it runs and almost drives, I guess the project's done and I'll just park it in the yard with everything else. You know what? I have some better ideas. When I had my first Fastback Barracuda, I had some big ideas. I wanted to do some custom work to make it a nice driving car. Modern stereo, modern seats, you know, center console. Just make it a cruiser. Well, I think I'm gonna revive that idea. Now that I work an hour away from here, I find myself in need of a comfortable, reliable, daily drivable car that gets decent fuel mileage. Most of the time, I'm driving the third gen Cummins. Although, I do drive the 68 when the weather's nice. The Slant 6 is perfect for economical driving in a classic. And you heard when I shifted into fourth how crazy low that is. The single probably highway crew is great. It'll be a bit of a slug, but that's fine. I mean, it could be worse. It could be a Datsun B210. I've been looking for a suitable daily driver car for a couple months now, and well, I actually almost pulled the trigger on a hybrid Lincoln of all things. <laughs> Glad I didn't. Anyway, my requirements for a daily driver are pretty simple. 30 miles a gallon, heated seats, and a really nice stereo. Oh yeah, quiet exhaust, insulation, soundproofing, that sort of thing. And I kind of like all the creature comforts, really. Now I know what you're thinking. 30 miles a gallon out of a tired old Slant 6? Well, the truth is, you're exactly right but I'll settle for 25. People on the internet say all the time, no one drives a muscle car for fuel economy, but they're wrong. I mean, my brother's Valiant gets like 20 plus miles a gallon and that's a V8. So I really think 25 is an achievable goal. The overdrive stick shift is a big part of that. I'm gonna get some small, reasonably sized tires. And uh, I might even put a 2.7 in the rear end instead of the 3.2 it's got now. Of course, the 103 horsepower the 225 Slant 6 kicks out will be even less whelming with a 27, but we'll just have to see. I can't really drive 70 miles a day on a gas can under the hood. So I went ahead and ordered a brand new fuel tank, which is actually crazy for me. I've never done that before. Oh, well, there's definitely some other stuff we'll have to address. Just imagine it, this thing. Uh, ratty, but nice inside, getting decent fuel economy and cruising the highways of Grace Harbor every day. I'm imagining it and it seems pretty cool. If you think that sounds cool, you better go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, because more videos on this car are definitely coming soon. From my perspective, this one was a bit of a wild ride, so I appreciate you sticking around and watching me revive this thing. It's sweet. Thank you for tolerating my obvious ADHD problem, and thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you don't take the time to do it right, you'll definitely make the time to do it twice. Definitely need to put this back under there. And tomorrow, it's clean the shop day. Ugh. One more quick story. My last 67 Barracuda Fastback, <sighs> tried to get too fancy, put new quarters on it, rebuild engine, rebuild transmission, disc brake conversion, rewired the whole car. It was such a huge, crazy project, it never got done. I never got to drive it. I had to sell it. I will not do that with this car. I'm not going to get too big for my britches. I'm going to do little projects one at a time and keep it together.